win tonight would dramatically transform his career. Defeat for Christie would, of course, be regarded as the shock of the boxing season. He's won 23 of his 40 fights, he's a formidable puncher, and he's been in with some of the best in the business. So that's our top of the bill, sponsored tonight by Croxley Script. It's scheduled for eight three-minute rounds as we now join our commentary team of Jim Watt and Reg Gutteridge. So now the new Lonsdale belt winner and uh, European challenger official. He's had six wins in the first round. So uh, not only must Bill Bryan not take his eyes off Lloyd Christie, neither can we. And he's, uh, he's done it the hard way with 40 fights now, but uh, he's really going well, Lloyd Christie. Had 12 wins inside the third round. But Del Bryan, at least, is on a winning roll. Uh, he's defeated one or two in the last three. He's had Darren Dyer, a very hot prospect as an amateur. Peter Ashcroft and Mickey Hughes on the Terry Lawless camp. Darrow from the Mickey Duff camp. So who knows with this game, you can always get a bit lucky. But certainly the hot favourite in this non-title fight is uh, Lloyd Christie. And he's coming at 10, 5 and 3 quarters, Christie. And uh, he's actually champion at the 10 stone division. He's learned his game, uh, Lloyd Christine. He never boxed as a senior amateur. His uh, younger brother, Errol, had all the limelight, of course, of that, getting Guinness Book of Records as, as an amateur. But now it's Lloyd's turn to come to the front, and he really has. Knocked out London's Chris Blake. To get his uh, belt outright, you have to have three winning fights uh, over the championship distance to get that. So the Southport Del Bryan from Wally Swift camp in Nottingham. At least now doesn't seem to be too overroad, but he's been on the deck himself a few times, stopped by George Collins and Tommy Shields. Both of those great fight night in Oldham and Alfreton. And the referee's Brian Hogg from Southport. Timekeeper is also a referee, Ron Hackett. Switch weights well, Lloyd Christie, actually. He's, he, get, he gets all over the place from low to high. And since he joined the, the Lynch stable in uh, Birmingham, he's won 9 of 11 since uh, 1984. So it really has transformed. Christie then, as you see they're pro since 81 and didn't box as a senior amateur. Boxed out of Coventry those days, billed out of Wolverhampton, but I think you'll find he was born in London. And that's, at that time, was a very good result. Drew with Terry Marshall, as you now know, realise came on and won the World Championship and has since retired. Round two then, and a sort of searching round for the champion, Jimmy. I just had a good look at him there, didn't he? Yeah, well, he did land uh, one good right hand, but he's always ready with the powerful stuff, but he uh, didn't see too many chances in the first round. Uh, Christie's a fighter who's always been respected in the game, but he seems to now have his experience and his ability and his head right all at the, at the same time, and he's, uh, his career's on the high at the moment. He's boxing very well. with his weight he's boxed anywhere from nine stone 13 to ten stone seven and uh, the old line about have gum shield will travel he has really been around this fellow i tell you finland denmark dunkirk you know a bit about that one paris and hamburg now he's doing it all at home uh, quite right as the british champion and uh, ready to fight 
Tech Lukalaketi, and he fought and lost to Terry Marsh. He's from Zaire, but is the official European champion. Right. And uh, assuming he gets over this okay, Jim, I would think Lloyd Christie's got a good shot of beating Lukalaketi, although he's a very useful fighter. Yeah, Callan Ketty is a good fighter. He uh, had a, a, a good fight with Marsh. Uh, Christie having a bit more power than Marsh. Uh, I see it would be a good match for him. It's a match he can certainly win. Yep, but he's got to win this one first, though. Uh, let's face it, old Dale Bryan's no mug. He, he, he looks a lot better than somebody who's only had 14 fights. Doesn't score too many knockdowns, Dole Bryan. Yeah, only one, I think, against Mickey Lurwell, and that one on to go the distance. He has been on the deck a bit himself, but he certainly got over a grueler with Gary Somerville. Four fights they'd had on the Caldell and Daho build in Birmingham, went to the seventh round. came out with a flyer when he defended the championship Christie against Chris Blake at Croydon uh, but now I think he thinks he can afford to settle down a bit you champions tend to do that in non-title fights Jim don't you yeah well uh, the defending titles obviously you're really psyched up for it and uh, he's been in title fights recently and this is just a little, little uh, night off for him if you like and he's obviously we can see at this moment he's not uh, psyched up the way he normally is but I think pretty soon he's going to realise he has to really get his act together and uh, put Brian under a bit more pressure Just a little cut there on, on his cheek, I think, uh, Del Bryan. But he's not bothered with it, uh, Wally Swift. And there it is. Mickey Hughes, as I said, uh, the Londoner from the Terry Lawless camp. That was a very good result, and only 11 days ago, so he's got to be in good shape. Second out, round three. And we're into the third round of a scheduled eight. With the British champion, Lloyd Christie, Bit of a searching start now he's made against Brian. And uh, as Jim Watt says, he's got to just stamp that authority on a bit now. But give Brian credit for standing there and trading. He's not backing off too much. And if you can win, even in a non-title fight against a champion, it certainly puts you in good stead to get a rematch with the title at stake. I don't know that I agree with a, a 10 stone champion coming in at almost 10 stone 6. I mean, it's uh, it's, it's not the done thing. And, uh, I wonder maybe if uh, Christie is just as sharp as he should be tonight. 10 stone 6 is far too heavy for a 10 stone champion. Well, there was no sign that he had to drag himself to do the 10 stone limit in the, in the previous championship fight, Jim. As you say, his, his punching power was extraordinary. Maybe some of the weight problem there, Jim, is it was a bit of a late call, actually, as a replacement for Robert Dickey, who, who's uh, not well enough to fight, originally was billed for this show. So maybe that uh, Christie's just lacking that little bit of sharpness for that yeah. reason. Well, that, that, would, that would allow for it, because uh, it obviously he, he, he lets uh, his weight go up between fights, so I suppose that would explain it. He's getting caught with a couple of punches here, come back with one of his own. But uh, he's been caught once or twice. He's not just as sharp as we've seen him recently. He did a very slow destruction job against Mo Husein at the Royal Albert Hall in London. He was uh, the Commonwealth lightweight champion. It went to the 12th round, but uh, he won so convincingly there, Huse um, Christie. And then he stopped Chris Blake only in 2 minutes and 46 seconds. 
Well, now the action started to warm up. There's more punches being thrown now as we get the countdown clock for the end of the third. And I think uh, Christie's fighting himself into shape, uh, as the pros would say in this game. That often happens with an experienced fighter like him. 40 fights, takes him a few rounds to get working. Second out, round four. And we're into the fourth round, and just a little nick around Christie's right eye there. I think it surprised the corner men, uh, Jim, actually, because Don Ageson seemed to take the time getting up there and dealing with that. Well, in the third round, I thought there was a more of an improvement in uh, Brian's work than there was in Christie's. I wonder maybe if being in with the British champion He's beginning to get a little bit more confidence now because he actually had quite a good third round. I think the, the time has arrived now for Christy really to stamp his authority on the fight and uh, take control. Oh, that, was, that was a good straight right hand. He was going away from it at the time, Brian, just as well for him. tactic of using a right hand against a right hand forward opponent as the counter just started to get some rhythm going now I think Christy Jim don't you started to bob the shoulder a little bit as though he wants to get warmed up yeah he's, he's stepping up the pace a little bit now he's, he's getting the punches home I haven't seen it, the power coming through yet but the punches are getting home now getting uh, Christy at it a bit, they're saying, come on, Lloyd, get closer. At least it's very much neutral ground, isn't it, for Wolverhampton and Nottingham. So, keep punches up there, says Brian Hogg. And he's coming back well, Del Bryan, isn't he, Jim? He's willing to mix it as we've got the last ten seconds. Brian did very well in the third round, and he's standing his ground here, and he's giving at least as good as he's getting here. So there's a break then, and we'll be right back with the champion action. And we're into round six, with the British like welterweight champion, it's 10 stone division Lloyd Christie, having a bit of a problem there. Just take some grease off his face, says uh, Brian Hogwell. Paddy Lynch, understandably, has been plastering it on a little bit there, the Vaseline over those little nicks around the eyes, and really calls Christie any trouble, he uh, certainly doesn't seem to be bleeding much, he's doing a good job in the corner with them. Must be frustrating for a champion who's been on such a winning run, Jim. To suddenly find, well, he's not struggling as such because he's not, not really been under any pressure. But just a bit frustrated, I would think. Well, I think he's under his own pressure here because I don't know how it would stand if we if we were losing points here. I don't know how that would affect his European standing as number one contender. So, uh, when you're number one challenger, you're always under pressure to keep winning and uh, keep performing. And I think maybe Christie has taken this fight a little bit uh, lightly. I don't think he realised Brian, who has those couple of losses, is probably a lot better than uh, Christie expected, and he's getting more confident as the fight goes on. He's putting up a terrific show. the Lynch brothers are really taskmasters when it comes to getting their fighters into shape and it's hard to imagine them 
is not quite what they wanted uh, letting him go in, but there you go, it's, uh, it definitely isn't one of his better nights. See, I think Christie's recent form has been so good that maybe that they reckoned it was uh, fair enough to take a chance with him when they knew he wasn't in 100% shape, but he doesn't look to be in the best of shape tonight, and it's just not working out for him. understand it really if he was getting nailed with, by a good puncher but certainly whatever else Brian is he's never been noted for that well, also Brian has made enough mistakes if I was for the normal Christie to move in and knock him out of there but uh, he just doesn't have the sharpness and he's not taking advantage I mean Brian hasn't run away he's been in front of Christie all the way through standing his ground and a few times his head's been far too high but Christie's not getting through with the punches scuffling going on there and they finish up hitting each other's shoulders round seven and you know Question, Jim, about somebody nicking a decision. Could that happen here with Brian or not? I, I would have thought maybe Christie was a bit in front, but it, it's very debatable. Well, I'm beginning to have my doubts now about Christie because a couple of times I've commented that uh, Brian has had a couple of good rounds, but I don't remember uh, Christie having... Uh, he's never managed to dominate the action at any time. He's never really had what you would see a good round. And here now he's been backed up, been pushed around the ring by Brian. Brian is the one who has improved over the eight rounds. Christie hasn't. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if uh, Brian was slightly in front at this point. Christie has done a lot of pressing, but uh, not very many good clean punches coming from the champion. with the punches Jim that's what's so frustrating to see a champion at work like this well, most of uh, Christie's work has been landing on shoulders and elbows and arms he's not I mean, I mean how often have we seen him knocking uh, Brian's head back very seldom but we've seen that the opposite happening it would not surprise me if uh, Brian is just slightly in front at this point <laughs> scuffling going on there, as you say, Brian has scored his share of punches. I feel it might be a desperation uh, last round stuff for Christie. Unnecessarily. So the countdown clock then at the end of the seventh. Three minutes to go. There's Pat Godel, the British super featherweight champion there, looking a bit concerned for his stable mate, Christie. I wouldn't have thought those nicks around the eyes, Jim, have really created any problem here. They don't seem to be bleeding at all. No, they haven't troubled him at all. I think all his uh, troubles have been uh, more or less self-inflicted, if you like. He's just uh, come in that little bit, uh, not, not quite out of shape, but not as sharp as we expect to see him. And uh, things haven't been working for him tonight. <laughs> So into the eighth and the last round. Now I wonder which way this is going to go. It's, it's possible, Jim, that Brian Hogg can come up with a one-sided scoring for one or the other. We don't know, but I doubt it. Well, but there are some quiet rounds in the early part of the contest which could have gone either way. Not too many punches been landed, and I think that's what the, the, the decision is going to depend on. If those rounds went Christie's way, then maybe 
We'll go home with a victory, but if the rounds were scored even, or went towards Brian, then that's the difference, and then Brian's going to go home with a points win. So I wonder now, is it all on the last? Certainly get the impression that Christie might believe that. Well, if ever Christie needed uh, some uh, big punches to make sure of a, of a victory, I would say tonight is the time. on top at the start of that round it's now Brian's turn well I think whatever way the decision goes Reg uh, Christie has found a challenger for his British title anyway well some cynics might say is it possible that Christie was carrying him no way Jim we can't afford to, to get it this close and, and possibly lose this It's all right for fiction riders, really, Jim. I mean, how many fights have you seen and indeed had? They don't carry anybody if they can help with a pro fighter. No way, especially with uh, Christie having his sights set on a European title. Uh, a defeat is just the last thing he needs. Well, you feel a bit stern there, Brian Hogg. I wonder if that's a pointer to which way it's going. Well, he did punch on the break there, Ray uh... Touch of desperation, don't you think? to go. Well, it's a good enough last round. Nothing in terms of power from either man, actually, but uh, certainly some good stuff in the gloves going on there. Now, which way is it going? And he's given it to Brown. Well, that has got to be, in its way, one of the biggest upsets that we'll see, certainly on the fight round period. Because this man, Lloyd Christie, has been bowling them over like nine pins lately. And along came, well, let's face it, what's seen, the over Max Gill, Brian. And he's finished up the winner. And here's, uh, well, rather dejected Christie then talking to Gary Newbon. Well, not only is that a major upset, probably the shock of the season, Lloyd, but he lost by three rounds. Uh, I don't I don't believe the margin was that wide, actually. Um, I lacked snap. Um, the weight well, didn't suit me at all. I was too sluggish at the weight. I wasn't carrying my speed into the ring, and uh, I thought that let me down. But uh, at the end of the day, all said and done, Bro Dale Bryan was a better fighter. He's been pre improving all season, and I think he just picked me to the post. I don't believe it was a three-round margin. Maybe one or two. But, uh, Would you give him a shot at your British title? Um, yes, most definitely a shot at the British title. Unless you, if he wants a shot at the British title, um, I'll be on form then. Well, you, a lot of people thought you were very brave taking the fight. Um, oh, I am, wasn't I? No, I was here and I did it, didn't I? You, know? <laughs> you certainly did. Now, he said he's prepared to give you a shot at his British title. Well, it may be different at, that, at his weight rather than your weight. Yeah. Uh, well, I have to think about it, you know what I mean? Because I've still got plenty of time yet. So you wouldn't of time. take the title shot? Yeah, I would, but, you know, I'd give, I'd give it time, yeah, you know what I mean? Give it time. Well, that was a major upset, the biggest shock of the season so far. What a British title fight that would be if it ever came off. Well, now we're going to have a...